The planet is heating up. The oceans are becoming filled with plastic. Change starts now. Change starts now. We're on a countdown to zero waste. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast. Here's your host, Laura Nash. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zero Waste Countdown podcast and radio show. Today, we're speaking with Catherine Hutchins and Anio Rahibi. They are both the founders of Good Eddie. It is a brand of cup that actually you can eat afterwards, so it's going to replace coffee cups. You don't have to eat it, but apparently it's uh, actually kind of good for you if you want to. So I'm really excited to hear all about this. So Catherine, Anio, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We're very happy to be here. Cool. So I just want to find out a little bit about uh, you guys and the company and how this cup works. And we'll talk a little bit about Australia as well. And shout out if you're listening from the other side of the world. That's very exciting. It's very cold here in Canada right now. It's freezing and there's snow everywhere. Um, so I'm sure it'd be very nice to be uh, to be in Australia today. Um, so I don't know who wants to go first, Catherine or Enyo, but I would love for you guys uh, to tell us all about your company. Oh, I'll go first. Um, so we are the co-founders of Good Eddie. Uh, we're making it easy for everyone to fight against disposable cup pollution. Every year in Australia, we are disposing of one billion takeaway cups. Good Eddie is launching a unique solution, which is a takeaway cup that you can eat. It is convenient and waste-free. And if it ends up in the bin, it will just break down naturally in under two weeks. Wow, that's awesome. So if it gets sent to landfill, it can still one day break down in landfill? That's right. So if it um, gets sent to landfill, then it will just break down naturally, just like food. Okay, that's pretty good. And uh, how did this company get started? So did you get, and, and let me just comment first, a billion coffee cups is that right in Australia? That is absolutely right so it's quite an astounding number and that number was from a couple of years ago so it will be even more now and it's continuing to increase. That's insane that's so many coffee cups and I read an article once about how your coffee culture is a little bit bigger down there and how Starbucks didn't do as well as they thought they would because I guess your coffee shops are a little bit different than North America in that you like to sit down at coffee shops more. Is that something that you notice or anything? Yeah, we definitely have a unique coffee culture here in Australia and particularly here in Melbourne. So we have a lot of local coffee roasteries and it is really common for people to sit down in the cafe, but it is also, especially right now, super common for people to uh, get their coffee on the go. Um, everyone's got a busy lifestyle, and during the last year as well, um, when we had a lot of closures of retail and uh, hospitality outlets, then in a lot of cases, the only option was takeaway. So it's becoming even more relevant. Yeah, I noticed that too here that the places like Tim Hortons coffee chain and stuff like that, they're not accepting the to-go coffee mugs anymore. So it kind of makes it worse. So anyone who was able to bring their own mugs kind of isn't anymore because of COVID, right? So I would imagine that, yeah, your numbers would be even higher probably. But I guess if people aren't commuting as much, I don't know how bad your lockdowns were in Melbourne. But um, yeah, I don't know if the numbers would be different or not. But let's go back to to your company. So how did this start? So I assume that both of you saw that there was a really big problem. So how did this uh, come about that you started Good Eddie? That's exactly right. So um, Catherine and I, we really love to talk about sustainability, new business ideas. Um, about a year ago, when we were grabbing a cup of coffee and chatting, we said how amazing it would be if uh, we could have an impact on minimizing waste in the coffee industry. 
Then we started doing some research and understanding the problem of disposable coffee cups and found that there weren't really any solution. So there are a lot of problems and there are every day more and more um, coffee cups are going to landfill. So we thought about what can be a real solution that basically um, avoid creating waste. So we concluded it should be something like food. Basically, you can uh, you ha have your apple and you eat it and that's it, and have your banana and eat it and that's it. And that's and if they end up in the bin, uh, basically they uh, break down naturally. They are sustainable and they are convenient. And so that was how the idea of sustainable uh, good eddy cup was born. That's awesome. I like that you guys saw a problem and decided to fix it yourself. I admire that quality. And, and that's what I love about my own show is that I get to talk to so many amazing people like you guys who are really smart. And it's one thing to have an idea, but it's another whole beast to turn that idea into a business that makes money and, and uh, you know, can employ people and all that sort of thing. So uh, I think that's amazing. So can you tell us about the cup? What is it made out of? So our cups are made from very simple ingredients, mainly oats and grains. The other thing that we are very committed to, to source our, all our ingredients domestically and support uh, local business, businesses and communities. And do you have a, like a certain machine that you make it or do you like contract that part out? Uh, we will be our own manufacturers, so we are in pre-launch phase at this stage. We have um, uh, started buying all the equipment that we need, and hopefully by end of March, beginning of a April, we will be starting producing Good Eddy Cups in Melbourne. Nice. That's awesome. I look forward to to seeing that. And that's so cool that you can produce them right there. I think Australia is pretty unique in that... There's probably a, a big push to have unique businesses because it, I assume it would be so expensive to import things, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so importing uh, is expensive, but also one of the things that Catherine and I very much um, are focused on is sustainability. Importing products by itself has a huge carbon footprint. Um, mm -hmm. So... Supporting local businesses, making everything everything locally, is it, it is part of that sustainability aspect that uh, we very much love to commit to. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, I, I know I mentioned this a lot uh, that I used to be in the Navy and I didn't sail too much, but I definitely sailed enough to see that, you know, ships use so much fuel. And not only do they use fuel, but their practices are pretty dirty in terms of dumping and and their black water and their gray water disposal and stuff like that so i think that that's a, a really good reason to be making things kind of where we are if we can um so that's great so can you walk us uh through the process a little bit so i guess you would take these ingredients and maybe shape them in a mold like how do they hold together and how long do they last? So basically we mix the ingredients, uh, we create a dough and uh, we bake these doughs in a machine. And in that machine basically it turns to uh, like a cup shape. And then yes, uh, so we finally have the cups and we stack them and uh, we can basically use them in the cafes. The shelf life uh, for the cups is six to nine months when they are in their package. But as soon as you take them out of the package, it's like a biscuit. So it's better to be used uh, in a couple of days. But if um, the cafes, they are using it in a sealed container, they can have it over uh, seven days or 10 days. Again, exactly like a biscuit. Nice. Was the packaging a tricky aspect? Sure is. Uh, so uh, we are uh, looking at uh, many different options. Definitely, we, we don't want to use uh, plastic. So uh, the package that we call it uh, the first package that all the stack cups goes in, like a sleeve, uh, we are looking at um, home compostable options. 
um, and we have um, the good news is we have found a couple of solutions. So we are uh, in contact with our suppliers to make sure when uh, before launch we have all those uh, in place. So that should give us uh, the same airtight functionality that we are after to give us the same shelf life that um, we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always, uh, that part's always tricky. And then I guess also shipping too, right? You'd want them not to break or anything on the way. Um, are they are they breakable or are they like really hard? They are similar to, if you can think of an ice cream waffle cone. Uh, oh. So they, if you drop them from a height on the ground, they will crack. But um, they are uh, robust enough um, that they're not gonna uh, they're not gonna break from normal handling. Um, so they can be treated similar to a packet of cookies. Uh, so they are a bit more fragile. Uh, however, we will have them packed nicely in the box um, so that we can reduce as much as possible any uh, damage during uh, transport. Mm -hmm. So have you been able to try them out? at all during the testing phase? Yeah, we have. So um, we've had quite a long uh, development of our cups, uh, right from doing some kitchen trials in my um, kitchen here and trying lots of different um, variations to get the flavor and the functionality right. And uh, we've also been working with our machine supplier to um, get the, the right cup shape and functionality um, with the machine and they've been able to send us some samples in that process as well so that's that's really good uh, so that we can try them and also we can take them to our um, customers uh, cafes and roasteries um, for them to try oh that would be fun and I'm sure you're getting some good feedback from uh, from different coffee shops and people are probably interested right because it's such a sustainable option yeah, and it's it's a really hot topic at the moment here in Australia and also around the world. So everyone's really excited and we've just been, even so, we've been really surprised at the positive response to Good Eddy that we've had. Uh, we've done a few demo days as well, uh, going to farmers markets and um, offering our cup um, as an option for when people get their coffee. And... We've seen that everyone loves it. They enjoy drinking their coffee and then eating the cup. And this is exactly what we wanted, uh, coffee drinkers to be able to grab a coffee on the go um, without feeling bad about um, just throwing out the cup afterwards. Yeah, that's where I think it would be really nice is at like concerts or festivals or like you said, the farmer's markets so that you can walk around. and uh, Because I guess if it doesn't have a lid, then it would be not as good for if you're driving on I don't know if your roads are as bumpy as ours <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> but is that sort of the idea of more like where you walk around rather than drive with it yeah that's right and uh, on the lead we are working on developing a sustainable lead option that would come with the cup that consumers could choose if they wanted to at the moment, the current uh, lids, hopefully a compostable version, will still fit on our cup. So if you're grabbing a good Eddie cup, you can um, have the option of putting on um, the lid if you're going to go on the car or something where you don't want the coffee to spill out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, lid would be, would be interesting. So are, like, is there a lot of call, car culture in Melbourne or is a lot of it kind of like thickly developed in the downtown core? In the CBD, it's really um, built up, I guess, and a lot of people take public transport, um, particularly the trains and trams to get into work uh, or even into the city in the weekends in the evenings. So uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that will be uh, walking around in the CBD rather than driving. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I guess you don't have to worry as much about the coffee getting really cold uh, like we do here because when we take it out of anywhere, it starts to kind of cool down right away. So I guess that's 
that's sort of a nice function too. Does it hold the heat in to the cup? Yeah, it's actually more insulating than a standard um, takeaway Ooh. cup because the wall is a bit thicker. So yes. uh, you can actually hold the outside uh, and you won't uh, you don't need anything in between and it won't burn your hand because the heat's kept inside. Oh, that is awesome. So when you uh, when you start expanding, you should sell a franchise to someone in Canada so that we can have these too. And then uh, it'll hold in the heat during the cold Canadian winters. That will be awesome. Yeah, we would love to do that. Yeah. Um, so what is the zero waste scene like in Melbourne, I you know we have a lot of international listeners, and we're on the radio here in Canada. So, could you just let us know what it's like being in the zero waste community in Melbourne? Sure. So it's um it's a really hot topic, and more and more we see people um are joining these communities because um the awareness, the knowledge about the impact of what we are doing on day to day basis to our environment um, is increasing. So we have, it's very interesting because we have had so many followers on Instagram and uh, contacting us on social media overall that they are part of this community. And then when they find um, that there, there are people like us and many other good founders that they are looking at finding waste-free options, we get such a huge support. And one, the other part that is very interesting that more, we see more and more younger people and younger generation are becoming part of these communities is something that um, we see that it is fundamentally is built in the society. And it's fantastic because uh, 10 years ago, if you look at these uh, topics, it's not, it's, it was not something that typically been discussed um, on a day-to-day basis. But now um, we see the awareness is high and the support is amazing towards waste-free communities and waste-free solutions. Oh, that's great. And is there any other businesses in Melbourne that you'd maybe like to give a shout out to that are doing some pretty amazing things like you two or that uh, are working to maybe keep the cities clean or reducing waste? Sure, there is a company um, uh, called uh, Reground. Uh, we were very inspired by what they are doing. Uh, so they started by uh, collecting coffee grounds and, and turning it to, to compost. And now they have um, expanded their business um, to even uh, collecting soft plastic and basically waste management education. So they work a lot with the councils and many other entities um, to really solve the problem from the root cause and turn basically waste to a resource. We really appreciate and uh, we are very inspired by what they're doing. Oh, that's great. I've been to Australia in Sydney and I thought it was so beautiful. Um, and I got to ride the train. So there was a pass in Sydney that you could do like trains, buses and ferries all like for one kind of low price. So I would tour around on that. And I have this theory that if you live in a beautiful place that you will maybe take care of it better, but I'm not sure if that theory is right. I just see it in California, for example. There's so many people who care about the environment there. It's very beautiful. On the west coast of Canada, there's mountains and oceans, and it, uh, it, it seems so much cleaner than the area that I live in now in the middle of Canada. So I kind of wonder if it's it, it has something to do with, you know, it being so beautiful in Australia and you having so much coastline and you've got the Great Barrier Reef. And do you guys think that it has uh, anything maybe to do with the landscape? I think it definitely does. Um, we live in an amazing country and we're right next door to New Zealand as well, where I'm originally from, which has a really clean, green attitude as well. And I think it's really connected to our amazing environment and outdoors and, and like you said, the the nature and the wildlife are really amazing. And uh, we've had a few other things like the bushfires happening here as well, which really um, turn people's focus to caring about the environment. And uh, yeah, I think it's, there's definitely a connection there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I'm just wondering how you both got into sustainability. So some people say there was a moment when they were a kid that happened or it just kind of happened by accident or or whatever. So I'm wondering, Catherine, if you want to go first and then um, if any of you want to go second so we know kind of who's who. Um, so if you guys just want to tell us how you got into sustainability. Yeah, well, for me, uh, I grew up in New Zealand, amazing outdoors and we as a family would always be doing uh, holidays around our own country um, getting into nature and hiking and biking and, and water sports activities and so from a very young age uh, I've been really passionate about the outdoors and the environment and I've always wanted to uh, conserve the the world we live in uh, so yeah, as as far as I can remember, um, I've always cared about uh, sustainability. Nice. And what about you, Anya? I think for me, is through my work background and my career. So uh, being in food processing industry and FMCG, I always observed how our behavior or consumption pattern can impact the environment. And more and more, I started learning about this and how we can buy small things that we do um, have a great negative impact or also a positive impact. So for me, it started just, um, you know, learning about the impact of every individual and every consumer. And I really got into it and started reading too much about it. And more and more, I thought I should do something uh, that, you know, have a good impact in this area. That's awesome. And what an interesting industry to work in right now. Uh, so with everything crazy that's going on in the United States, some of us up here in Canada are a little bit worried about our supply chains. We get a lot of fruit and vegetables from South America. We get a lot of stuff from California. Uh, we get our oranges from Florida, that kind of thing, right? So we are pretty reliant on a lot of stuff that comes up from America. And so it kind of has got me thinking lately about our, our food chain and our supply and uh of course, with zero waste, I'm always thinking about packaging and it's a very complex issue how to make the packaging and the transportation more sustainable without making things way too expensive for people or or hurting the supply chains. Right. So it's an interesting, I think, kind of topic to be interested in right now. Absolutely. And it's a very complicated topic. As you said, there is not one solution fit for all. But, you know, for example, we really need to think about what is what is the shelf, like what is the outcome we want out of the package? Is it, does it apply for everything that we want to do? Again, going back to, of course, our business, Good Eddie, at the life uh, time of average lifetime of a coffee cup is 15 minutes. But for that 15 minutes, we are creating so much waste. That's why a solution like a, an edible cup can be a very good solution. In the other areas for food, we need a longer shelf time. So, of course, something that is edible is not that awesome or that, not that applicable. But really thinking through what is the, what is the outcome we, are, we want out of that package and providing the solution that really meets those criteria is something I think more and more uh, the companies need to think about and come up with the right solution for every different application. Yeah, absolutely. Because there is, you know, we do need some plastic, I think, like with our medical industry and, and stuff like that, right? But there, there are things like coffee is just such a great example, because it's so short that it's in your hand, but then it could really last for so long. And so it's also hard to remember to bring your travel mug if you're not used to it. So I haven't told this story in the show in a long time, but my student union building in my university used to offer a dollar specialty cups if you brought your own mug. And this makes me sound not very smart, but I remember so many times forgetting my mug and getting up to the, the coffee shop and being like, oh my gosh, I forgot it for like the 10th time or something, you know? And then finally I did remember it. <laughs> and so I can remember it now and I have for years, but I just remember it took a really long time um, because you're, you know, you're focused on school and your work and what's going on in your life and a coffee cup may, might not be your, your main priority. So I see the value in having a takeout, uh, a, a disposable cup, which is 
so much better that you guys are making a disposable cup that's not made with plastic and, and, you know, different chemicals or whatever happens to be in it. Um, so yes, a mug is a solution, but there are times where you don't have a mug. And so this is, I think, really important to have these compostable mugs. So I like it a lot. Um, Thank and I would, you. I hope that, I hope one day I can try it in Canada. That'd be great <laughs> if it ever comes here. We hope so too. The last question I wanted to ask, we'll have two more actually. So because you guys are succeeding in this and you've taken this really far and done such a good job, do you have any advice for any young entrepreneurs that might be listening if they're interested in starting a sustainable company themselves? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's been a really interesting journey for us and certainly challenging um, creating a startup, but at the same time, it's exciting and it's it's really rewarding as well and as everyone will tell you it's it takes a lot more time and effort than you can ever predict before starting but it's totally worth it uh, we've been working on our initiative for about 18 months and we've faced a lot of challenges along the way but we've had some huge successes as well so you know we had to find the right solution we had to do a lot of research and development and finding the right suppliers for the technology and equipment. Um, but also one of the biggest ones is navigating the new landscape of this startup world, which is a totally new area for us. So we're so happy with what we've achieved and we think that our success has been quite reliant on two key factors. One would be setting clear goals and taking steps towards these goals every day. Uh, so any progress is good progress. Just keep on going. Um, the second one would be the support that we've received from mentors, friends and family, experts in the field and like-minded businesses and individuals. This has been absolutely critical for us being able to get to where we are today. So yeah, it can be very overwhelming the amount of things that need to be achieved and you got to expect that it's not always going to go according to plan um, but just keep making small steps and celebrate the achievements along the way and enjoy the journey nice yeah I think that's pretty good advice um, did you have anything to add Anya no totally uh, I agree with um, Catherine they say whatever you focus it expands so definitely if somebody has a goal in mind and they love to start a new startup um, just focus on it definitely worth it and it's very very rewarding awesome well i am uh, really happy to hear about this company and uh where can we find you online uh, we have a website so you can visit us at good-eddy.com and you can also find us on instagram and our instagram handle is good underscore eddy and eddy is edi so yeah that's if you go and find us there follow us on instagram and find out more information on our website and contact us if you would like as well are you guys still raising um funds as well i think you were doing a like a gofundme campaign or something that's right we are still so we finished the first round it was very successful so we hit the target for that uh, but our campaign is still is on and uh, we really appreciate the support from uh, everybody who really want to uh, join us in this journey. Uh, so we still we are raising for the remainder of the funds that we need for our commercial launch. And so if somebody is interested in helping with that, can we find that information at goodeddy.com? And uh, not at this stage because we are changing our website, but it is on Ready Fund Go website. And then there is a campaign uh, for the only takeaway cup you can eat. Uh, so you can uh, just go directly to Ready Fund Go or the link is in our bio in our Instagram page. Yeah, and the right. link is also on our website as well. If you just scroll down, uh, there's a button that says order now. And then it will take you through to our Ready Fun Go page. That was a recent update that I had missed. Okay, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, so thank you very much for taking some time and uh, speaking to me from around the, the other side of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been really enjoyable talking to you. Awesome. That was Catherine Hutchins and Annie O'Rahibi from GoodEddie.com. Change starts now. This is the Zero Waste Countdown Podcast.